Hill Shepherds Amanda and Clive Owen live on one of the most remote farms in the country, where they're raising their nine children. You know, you have one, and then it's two, it's like double trouble. Three, it's just a bit more pressure. Four, yeah, it's a bit extra. Five, it doesn't matter anymore. We're following this extraordinary family throughout another year as they work round the clock on their wild farm. Who's milking now? I can't even see. Me. Brilliant. As the kids continue to grow, we'll witness the highs and lows of their remarkable childhood. Remember what to do? Banda! Oh, bloody hell, the sheep are coming out! Who left the gate open? A calf on the half. And discover how the family takes on the challenges of their traditional and extreme way of life by pulling together. This work is very physical, but it's just what we do. There's Raven. She's off at university. Ruben, he's always tinkering with something. Miles really loves farming. Edith, she's really good with the sheep. Then there's Violet, just such a tomboy. Sydney, he's cute. Then we've got Anis, Clemmy, and Nancy. This week, the family celebrates the festive season. Thank you, Santa. Oh, that is that nice. Is brilliant. Look, and there's even some sheep. Do you squeeze out the hold? While two maids get milking. Doing a little handover. Brilliant. Who's milking now? I can't even see. Me. She's doing very, very good. Right, this is the big experiment. One calling bird is all wrapped up in Clive's Christmas contraption. This old thing hasn't been used for a hundred years. And a Yuletide visitor surprises the whole family with their presence. I think you guys will want to come and see this. Oh! oh, that is so exciting! The family's remote farm in the Yorkshire Dales is surrounded by steep and rugged moorland. It's Christmas time, and all the kids are on the farm for the holidays. Raven's home from university, so everyone's getting into the festive swing. Clemmy, yeah. do you want to do a picky thing? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> While the frozen moors are an enchanting playground for the younger Owens, in the barn, Clive and Amanda are attending their herd as midwinter sees the arrival of all the new calves. And it looks like there's a mum in trouble. We've got a cow here that um, is obviously going to calve. For whatever reason, she isn't progressing, she isn't getting on with it. With the vet over half an hour away, it looks like their only option is to help the delivery along using birthing ropes. We're just going to help nature take its place. It's been on the way a little while. I'll tell you something, Clive. It's been a bit stressed, that yeah. calf. Fetal faeces, known as meconium, has been passed by the calf ahead of birth, a sign it's in distress and must be delivered as soon as possible. Come on. Come on, little calf. Come on, little calf. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Hey, welcome to the world. Though Amanda's saved the calf, it's not out of the woods yet. I would say she's taking her first steps, but I don't know. <laughs> As premature cows often need to be hand-reared if they're to survive. Come on. Luckily, there are plenty of midwives who want to attend the mum and her new arrival. It's not sucking off its mother at all. So it's totally and utterly reliant on us feeding it. Does it just, like, need to learn to suck? Well, it hasn't got a very good suck reflex, I think because it was premature. It's when it was first born, it couldn't get up, it couldn't suckle. So, in a way, we are almost kind of going against nature by helping it along. I don't know what's going to happen with it, we just have to do as best. We can get this suck reflex going. There is a chance that we can get it 
<laughs> feeding off its mother, which, have, which would always be better than bottle feeding it, because obviously, if it's reliant on us, we have to feed it every day, whereas if it goes back onto the cow, it can have nice warm milk whenever yeah. it wants. The mother needs to be milked several times a day to keep the calf well fed. So Amanda's training up a team of milkmaids. Clemmy has just become rather good at milking, haven't you? You have to have lots of lessons. You have to have lots of lessons, yeah. Or you have to just milk lots of cows, yeah. don't you? So the best thing is to lean right into her so if she shuffles about, you can move quickly out of road so you don't get trodden on, OK? You have to just give her a little stroke. You do have to then, give her a little stroke. And then she might just calm down. That's it. That's it, Clemmy. Four-year-old Clem hasn't started school yet. Right, can I have a go? So has spent lots of time shadowing Amanda and perfecting her milking technique. Clem is actually worth her weight in gold. She's really into coming out and, um, and getting on and helping out. She likes to be doing something. It gives her a sense of worth, I think. Where does the milk come from? The tit or the udder? Uh, hudder. Hudder. <laughs> <laughs> the hudder. The hudder. Look how well she's doing. It's very really hard getting milk off a cow. It is very hard getting milk off a cow, but you're doing a very good job. Six-year-old Annie hasn't had as much practice and is keen to get tips from her younger sister. Can you show me please? So get your top hand on there. That. Squeeze. How well, come it's not getting in there? So that's a, that's a thing where milk comes down and then, and then you squeeze it. Doing a little hand over. Wow, look at that. Brilliant! Who's milking now? I can't even see. Me. She's doing very, very good. With such a refreshing drink on tap, Milkmaid Clem has got used to the perks of the job. I have drunk to cow's milk yes. and it was lovely. It is lovely. It tastes really nice and creamy. Yeah, creamy like, it tastes like creamy, creamy milk. It does. All topped up, the calf's happy. And the girls have even christened their new friend. What's your calf called? Kit, Kit Kat. Kat. <laughs> when dusk falls, the temperature drops, and Amanda's worried about the underweight newborn. Up we get. As Kit Kat is too weak to stay in the barn, Amanda has the perfect place to keep her toasty warm. A calf on the half. Is it too cold for? A uh, cow to go out into its mother. Yes, it is. It's going to be below freezing tonight. So she's got a little jacket on, but it's just better if we can keep her a little bit warm. She likes me. She does like you. He likes you and sleep on me. She's still not a very well calf. She's not very strong. She's not as strong as the other calves, is she? Like this. Exactly like that. She's not as strong as the other calves. So there still is a chance, 50 50, that she might not make it die. We have to look after her somewhere and give her lots of food. But that you can only do your best, can't you? Yeah. You can only do your best and you can't win them all. Sometimes something dies, doesn't it? Yeah. That's all. Yeah? So I'll look after her so well. OK. You look after her so well. Good lass. The fate of the calf hangs in the balance, but four-year-old Clemmy is determined to help Kit Kat pull through. It's Christmas Eve on Ravenseat Farm. Kit Kat, the family's premature calf, is now a week old and has spent every night convalescing in the farmhouse. He can walk about a bit, but I don't want him to fall on his face particularly because he's icy. But it's all a step in the right direction. Look, you see that? Unable to walk a few days ago, this morning it looks like the calf's on the up. I was worried she was going to die, but I'm feeling a bit more hopeful today. Just hold him steady. Just don't let him go too far, because he'll be going back to his mum in a minute. The children have bottle-fed Kit Kat around the clock. But Amanda knows the best chance the beloved calf has of becoming a healthy member of the herd is to learn how to fend for itself. She's not sucking. And I watch. See this? Yeah. See, she's fighting it, but look. I'm squirting a bit of milk in her mouth now. 
Mm, why are we trying to make it suck it? If we can make her get her own milk, it's better for her, isn't it? Oh, look, look, look. Can you hear a sucky noise? Yeah. What do you think, Clem? It's like... <laughs> oh, good, Kit That's really, really good, isn't it? But if you look there, I'm not even holding her now. She's doing it herself. I think she likes it. She will. That's how she's supposed to feed. She's not supposed to feed off a bottle. Look. Yay! That is so good, Kit Kat. Can I suck her? Yeah, of course you can. I got Kit Kat. Clemmy, you know, that means that you're, you've done such a good job to get her to this stage. Thanks to four-year-old Clemmy's kind care, Kit Kat the calf is on the road to recovery. It did look at one stage like maybe there was something actually physically wrong with her rather than it just being premature. No. But time seems to be remedying it. Clem's been milking the cow, she's been feeding her, hands on. And I mean, at the moment, all the signs are looking positive. We've really made great strides today with her suckling um, off the cow herself, so that's absolutely brilliant. Almost all the family's thousand-strong flock is pregnant with this year's lambs, toughing it out through winter over hundreds of acres of rough ground. Have you seen them up there, Clive? Hi, I see them. I need to go up here and come back on them one of these days. It's snowing up there, look. Hmm? It's snowing over there. Oh, well, it can start to come lumpy. Can. Terrible. Lifelong shepherds Clive and Amanda are used to the 24-7 demands of the job, tending their animals, whatever the weather, on high days and holidays. We don't have this, I don't know, week off or whatever like most people do. We have uh, a few hours off. It said there was going to be high winds today. There could be, I don't know, 60, 70 mile an hour wind, I would guess. Things are hungry. So, you know, we're not, we're not going to lamb till April, but if things start getting thin now, it's really hard to get them back in condition before lambing time. So you need to kind of keep on them. You need them, you don't want them to get thin. And this sort of weather is the kind of weather that makes them just want to hunker down and not particularly want to go out and find any good grass, do they? They don't, do they? So they're looking for the shepherd at the moment. Whilst their parents work, when it comes to their Christmas chores, the children always find some way of having festive fun. Hey, Miles, we've got a challenge for you. What? Can you balance along that bar all the way? Uh, no, no. Go on, Miles, your turn then. How far is he going to get? Miles, it's scary. Don't fall, don't fall. He's, he's got it, he's got it. Oh, he's beaten me. I've been hard. Right, let's go get a cup of... As Christmas Eve draws to a close, eight-year-old Sydney is daydreaming of what tomorrow may bring. Have you got any thoughts about what you want for Christmas, Sid? Uh, yeah. I want a toy sheep trainer. You do? Yeah. What, like that? Yeah, because when I grow up, I want to be a farmer. And a toy mower. A mower? Right. For your tractor. So if you had one of these trailers and a mower, you'd be in business. Yeah. Shut that door on it, then. He can't let him. He's as strong as a horse. Who watch this. Get up. Perfect. Come on! Come on! Come on! 
with just a few hours before Santa arrives, it's not just the kids who need to be tucked into bed tonight. Tony! Come on! Come on! Where is he? There, there, there. Come on, girl. This is washing his hooves ready for bed. Oh, come on. Come on. Trot. Trot. Trot, Tony. Trot. Come Take on. him in and shut the door. Come in. Your other pony's coming, he's bringing up the rear. Look, he's going very slowly. Prehistoric pony's coming. What's that little him go? Got to keep on plodding onwards. Here he is. Do you know anything about, at this time of year, stables and why they're a bit special? Have you ever heard of someone called Jesus? Baby Jesus? Jesus. If Jesus had a baby. Right. Do you want me to explain baby Jesus in the stable? There was no room at the inn, and Mary had her baby in the stable. And do you know where his bed was? He didn't have a cot like you. No. He was no. put in a hay manger. You know where you put your hair? Yeah. That's the only place he could lay, because it was nice and comfy. Ah. So they say that on Christmas Eve, at midnight, in the middle of the night, horses in their stables all kneel down because that is the time that baby Jesus was born. And that's what Christmas is all about, yes. okay? So we get presents and we put a Christmas tree up and it's all to celebrate. Yes. Do you think they do? Kneel down at midnight. He might be a little ready for bed. Yeah, you put your brush back. It's nearly bed for you. All right, gonna say night night to them. I'm gonna give them a nice hug. Say night night. Night night, everybody. In the farmhouse before they turn in, the kids are busy listing the one present they wish for the very most. If you want a jacket for Tony, you could draw Tony with a coat on, couldn't you? Can you help me? What colour for Tony? Uh, I want him to be pink. Pink, OK. Do you not draw its name? Do you want to write Tony? Tony a pony. Tony the pony. What are you doing, Miles? Boots. I want some new trials bike boots. Dear Santa, I would like some trials boots. This time, I don't want Carl for Christmas. This time, I don't want Carl for Christmas. Nine-year-old Violet has a modest request for Santa this year. I'd like some lip balm. Some peas. No, please. please. No, I would like some lip balm. <laughs> I don't want anything else. Anything else? Thank you. From, From Violet. Violet. Isn't that lovely? Wow. Violet, can you draw lipstick? She says, can she draw lipstick? Unlike Violet's humble wish, Clem's not holding back on her demands. She's adding to her extensive list to, to make up for Violet's oh. minimalist. Can you draw roller skates? And I want a teddy box called Daphne. Because I need, I need to be good. Listen, what you got, Sid? Dear Santa, I would want a toy sheep trailer with some toy sheep, thank you. Oh, that's good. And you've drawn it as well. Will you show Clemmy how Santa reads the letter? Till, if you took on the fire, um, Santa will read it by the smoke. But if you took up the chimney, uh, Santa will read it when it's in the sky and he'll go over and collect it and read it. Are you going to do it now? Yeah. with everyone's messages on their way to the North Pole. All is quiet in the Owen household in anticipation of the big day. Deep in the Yorkshire Dales, Christmas morning is dawning. And on Ravenseat Farm, all nine children are hoping Santa's delivered their Christmas wishes. Oh, horse! Oh, my God! Who's this one? Hannes, here you go, my little darling. You open me up. Wow. Look at them. What a colour. <laughs> hey. Oh, Miles. Yeah. Oh, look at them. How cool. Thank Anna. you, Santa. 
I got a makeup set. Sydney lad. Oh. Yep. What could it be? Ah. Oh, nice. Wow. See oh, wow. You said, didn't you? You said you wanted a trail like mine. Oh, that, that is nice. That is brilliant. Look, there's even some shape. Let's have a look. Wow, well, look at that. It's called Raven. It's Raven. called Raven. Clementine, here you go, my darling. Yeah. Come on. What is it? It's Tony's jacket. Oh, it's Tony's jacket. Oh Let me have my How God. good is that? Perfect. With all the presents opened, the youngest of the family settle in to try out their gifts for the first time. Can you do that gr that green? That green one on the other eye. Go like that. But it's not just the little ones testing new things this Christmas. Right, guys, make way. Right, this is the big experiment. Make way for a big bird. Excuse me. This old thing mm -hmm. hasn't been used uh -huh. for a hundred years. But we hope uh -huh. it's going to cook our Christmas dinner. Don't ask me how long this is going to take, because on the back of the foil packet, it didn't have a cooking time for um, a clockwork Dutch oven. Why did you decide to cook the turkey on that machine, Mum? Well, we've had this machine and we've looked at it for years, so we decided today was the day. How does it? How is it spinning? Well, you turn a key, it's clockwork in here, you turn a key, and, and it slowly turns it both one way and then back the other, doesn't it? It's ten minutes one way, ten minutes the other way, just ever so slowly. Stopping it burning. Why don't you get yourself a glass of wine and park yourself here? Absolutely. It's a difficult job, as they say, but someone's got to do it. So, as the rest of the family heads outside to take on the day's chores... The Glock. It seems everyone's preoccupied with the fate of the Christmas dinner. Mum's using this, this clockwork thing to cut the turkey, but normally I like stuff like that, mechanical things, but it's a bit risky cos the turkey's at stake. It'll still taste good, I hope. Yeah, I hope. I want it to taste good and not be burnt. Because uh, we're cooking it over the fire, does it mean we're barbecuing it? A little bit, sort of. Not really, though. Uh, with spit roasting, so... I don't know what that means. Do you know? No. Do you think it will taste different? I don't think Mum's ever cooked on the fire before, so it's probably... Should we go now and get on the fire before the fire goes out? Yeah. Ah! Horses! In all the excitement of Christmas Day, the family's forgotten the usual farmyard etiquette. For goodness sake now, what? Okay. And only one person's noticed it's not just the horses running amok. Unaware of the chaos unfolding outside, there's one creature that's not getting away on Clive. It's starting to look like a cooking turkey, doesn't it? It's starting to brown slightly. I think it'll be lovely. This would be every household's dream at one time. I don't know when, a long time ago. If you came into a house with one of these, folk would be green with envy. <laughs> Clive's festive contraption may have one animal under control. Get out, get out! Outside, four-year-old Clemmie's doing her best to restore order to everything else. Get out! Get out! And is cursing the extra work. Stupid buggers. I have to do this work for Mum and Dad, because Sun is steep and naughty. It's a little bit hard getting sleep into a gate. One more soup to get in. I'm right, you. Right. Sort out. Having found the leaky 12 ton feed store, the final escapee is refusing to budge. Come on! Come on, come on! Come on, come on! But Clem's not being outsmarted by this sheep. If I get some food of a hard spike. And is playing it at its own game. Come on out. Don't be afraid. 
Clemme, she's quite, um, quite stubborn and she won't be beaten. There's nothing she likes more than a bit of a calamity or a disaster and trying to sort it out herself. Claire! I did it. I managed to get them in a field. I put some food in there and, and they might appreciate how I done. Thrilled, Clem can't wait to take her good news back to the farmyard. I did it. I really got them in. What did you in. do? I really got them in. What? The sheep? Yes. How did you manage that? Yeah, I got some food in here and then they followed me and then I did it. I awesomely did it. I'm very impressed. How many was there? Uh, there were, um, the, I think there was... Oh, you can't count, can you? Mm. No. Oh, well, never mind. You got them all. That'll do. How did the sheep escape? They just run over you. You didn't saw the gate. I, d I didn't shut the gate. No, because you let your horses and it you It was my fault. You have to saw the gate. Sorry, country code. Well, it's a good job I've got you on hand, isn't it? Yes! After slaving over the fire for three hours, Clive's labour of love is finally ready. There's not many turkeys been cooked like that this year, has there? It's been roasted in the old-fashioned way. That looks good, Dad. Do you think it looks good, Sid? Yeah. You're going to scoff it? <laughs> and with nine expectant mouths to feed, it's time for the moment of truth. Right, I'm going to carve this turkey. What do you think, Mum? Well, I think that looks brilliant. It looks really grand. It looks to have cooked really, really well. It must have been a very hot fire, Clive. Yeah, it's carving lovely. Sydney's going to say grace. Everyone be quiet for a minute. Thank you for the food we're about to receive. Amen. Amen. Yay, get scoffed. Turkey's absolutely lovely, Manda. It's amazing, really, that we've cooked it like that. It's really good, Mum. So what's been the best thing in the year for you, Raven? It's probably got to be uni, hasn't it? But it's also been, like... The hardest part, because uni stuff, missing you guys, you know, home cooked meals. Aww. Aww. Well, you, Ruben. Probably get a new bike. Exactly, yeah, well done. Doing my first event things. Yeah. Probably. Because, I mean, that was all working hard, grouse beating to get your money and sell your tractor. and Yeah, so that was a credit to you. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Well done. Miley? Probably getting the new. Yeah. Getting a trials bike. Huh, well done. Sydney lad. Sid, what's your favourite part of the year? Uh, getting my bike. You little ones. Annie, what's your favourite thing? Raven coming back. Raven coming yeah. back from you. Oh, oh. Right. Clem, you got something very special this year. What was it? It's Tony, and I missed him a little bit because he it was taking a little bit long. Oh, I see your Christmas dinner's taken her away from Tony. OK. <laughs> I understand. I feel for you. So, yeah, scoff your dinner, and then we'll have to go and see whether his new rug fits, won't we? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you can guess if you want. You can guess if you want. What's the best thing I've got this year? Get a tra... Best thing? Polaris. Flowers. Dog. Midge. No. No. Go on. My new hip. <laughs> Right, well, I'm just going to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. With festive spirits high, the family heads out to enjoy the winter wonderland. Come on, then. Try these rugs on, little Joe. And in the stables, someone's waiting to receive his Christmas gift. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, oh, my God. <gasps> oh, that really fits him! <laughs> oh, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God! Isn't that nice and soft? Yeah, it feels like a, it feels like a soft horse. <laughs> it's gorgeous, isn't it? Huh? Do you mm -hmm. think he likes it? Yeah. It's January, and as the new year rolls in, for the family's flock of hill sheep, breeding time is coming to an end. There, look. There, look, look, look. That's very graphic. 
a big healthy swell there to pull to 100 sheep. So that's what you like to see. During breeding season, each of Clive's pedigree male sheep, known as tups, must be painted with rud. There we go. Can I have a go of rud at him? Yeah. He needs to be under here, look. Can you see? He doesn't mind, he doesn't hurt him. But you can see which yows. He's tupped, can't you? That's it, under his brisket. Give it a right good rub in, cos that's the mark... I'll have a go. ..that he's going to leave on the yow's bottoms. The price of each purebred lamb is affected by the pedigree of its parents. So Edith, Violet and Sydney are helping record the pregnant ewes with a smit mark. Oh. Why do you have to smit, then? So I know that in lamb to this tup, you see, this tup's called Helbeck. Put a little paint mark on each one at a certain place on its body, and that tells us that every sheep with that mark at that place, that colour, is in lamb to this tub. There's only one person allowed to smit on this farm. Me? And I am him. <laughs> you don't want a mess, and uh, I want it how I want it. Paint, paint, paint. Pass me the paint, Sydney. Thank you, my friend. I like this enamel paint. And if you twist it in, it stays in. Do you just make up where you put it and what colour? Well, no, I have places where I put them year after year, you know. Which is side? Which side? Same as that? That side. Are you sure? Uh, yeah. I hope so. I've always had trouble with near and far, I left and right. I don't know why, but I have. Blue pop, hell back. She draws a sheep and puts the smit on. Says I never have to think about it again. One, two, One, two three, four, four, five, six, six seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Clive can always count on the kids to keep him right, and it's not long before the sheep are sent back to the hills to see out the rest of winter. Fasten gate, please. But before her flock are sent back to school, Amanda's sharing a discovery she's made in one of the family's many traditional barns. Right, so shh. Do you know we can see if we can see it? Right, it's there, it's there. It's in that little gap of light there. Wow. It's a barn owl, isn't it? Yeah, it's a barn owl, right to know. Because it's very light coloured. It's really cool, that, isn't it? Oh, it is. I'm really impressed, yeah, really. It's, it's I mean, a rare thing and nice to see. You see, the one in the next barn might be a tawny owl, because it didn't seem as lightly coloured okay. as that. Later that day, armed with a night vision camera, Miles and Sydney are determined to see if the next barn has a nocturnal visitor. Hopefully, if the owl comes, we'll be able to catch it in action. How does it work? When the owl comes, it'll detect it and then start videoing. Have you seen, ever seen an owl before? Yeah, I have. They're pretty cool. Up here, I normally see just barn owls, but... I've seen tawny owls, but not here. Right, I think that's all set. That's it, Sid. Yep. In the depths of winter, food is in short supply for all creatures who live here. So, under Amanda's watchful eye, Sid has a plan to entice a hungry owl towards their camera trap. What are you doing? We saw a white barn owl today, so I'm catching mice for it to feed. For it to eat? For dinner? Could I have a cat? To put in this? In the little hole. This one? Yes. Does mice like peanut butter? Yeah. Better than cheese? A lot. It's not just the owl who may benefit from Sid's pest control. In these hold houses, when it's winter time, you do get mice and occasionally bigger things trying to get in. Rats, we don't like them. But mice, you know, they can, they can come in through little gaps in the wall and um, we have to put traps down. That's all you can do. Aged just eight, he's already become an accomplished trapper. You have to be careful when you're setting the trap so you don't get your finger cut. Well, you always push it a little bit, then it should click. Right, so, if you put it between two things, the mice only has one option to get through it. Right, that one's set.
It's the beginning of January, and the children are enjoying the last few days of the Christmas holiday. After discovering an owl roosting in one of their old stone barns, the whole family's been working on an elaborate plan to encourage these rare visitors. And overnight, there's been some scurrying in the dairy. I've got you. So I'm very happy about that. We can feed the owl. Mum, a mouse is not moving in a trap. A mouse is not moving in a trap. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Look at that. Let's have a look. Oh, my God. That's... Yeah. Yeah. It's owl food. Oh, oh. my God. Oh. Sid, what did you put in the trap? Cos whatever it peanut was... Butter. It, peanut butter. Get it out of the trap, and then Clemmy can put it in a pocket. Shove it in. It's a rat. It's mouse. not a rat. It's a mouse. Oh, I forgot its name. Can you get it in there? Good lass. There we are. Yeah. Right, let's get our stuff on. Let's go and take it to the um, owl, owl house. The owl house. Braving the elements, the family hopes the gift will be a welcome meal for their feathered friend. Horrible day, isn't it? So windy. Have to keep hold of you or you'll blow away. Right, come and have a look in that barn. There's a lovely barn owl. Let's go and see if the owl's at home. If I was an owl, I'd be at home today. Right, so shh. Shh, and we can see if we can see it. That way, that way, that way. Mum, where's the owl? Where's the owl? It's not at home today. That's where he usually sits. Yeah. Right up there on that perch. Do you know how we know? What's all that there? Bird poo. Bird poo. It's owl poo. Well, you go put the put it in the right place then for the owl. Put there. If you put it there, it might the wind might blow it off. So you might want it on the side. Put there. Right there. Let's see it. To be done. That is the owl's supper, sorted. Yeah. Yay! After a collective effort, the family's hoping for mouse camera action. The next morning, Miles and Sydney are up early and have news from the barn. I think you guys will want to come and see this. Come through here. Come on, guys. Let's go and see what they've got. Hiya. Mum, me and, me and Sid have set that camera trap up and we're hoping to see if we've uh, caught... Oh, have you brought it back? Yes. Right, I'll go put it on then. Now, this is quite exciting. Oh, look at that. Look, here's the window. Here's the window. You see the moon on that? Is that the moon, Sid? Oh, the camera's moving. Something did knock it. It's on it. Oh! Oh! oh. Clemmy, look! Look at that. Oh, that is so out. exciting. Working together, the family's mission to encourage these endangered creatures to share their unique home has succeeded. It's eating your mouse! Oh, look, is that eating your mouse? Yeah. mouse? Oh, that is amazing! Just look at it! Look at that! That mouse that you took up there, it's got it in its beak. Now you can see its tail hanging down. Look, there, it's dangling there, its tail's hanging down. The mouse that you took up there in your pocket. Where's the daddy owl? Where's the daddy owl? I don't know, he'll be there somewhere. Listen. Look, listen. He's maybe shouting his mate, eh? Do you think? Hey, up, hey, up. Oh, there's two! Well, that's amazing. I, I can't believe you've got that on your camera. You're very clever, that. lads. You're very clever. I don't think it's a barn owl. No, it doesn't look like a barn owl. I think it's a tiny owl, but I'm not sure because there's other kinds of owls. Book of British birds. That's the one. Yep, a big owl on the front. Hey, look what's on the front. Imagine to mum. 
That's him. Oh, nesting. No nest built, lays in old building. Food, it likes small mammals. Its favourite is mice. That was really, really good. And I, I, it was, I didn't expect to, to see that. Sid caught the mouse, so that was good. So he did me a favour to get it out of the dairy. That's right. Miles, for setting up that trap, which I can't, I, I actually can't believe that you managed to make that work. So next we want an eagle, don't we? Thanks, Clem. The family spent all December hand-rearing their premature calf. Is that enough, Mummy? Push it down, see what you think. Bit more. But in the cow shed, Amanda's made a shocking discovery. Kit Kat, the calf, died. I came out here one morning and I found it dead. I really thought that it had turned the corner. Conversations never come up with Clementine, with Clem, um, so she doesn't know that Kit Kat's dead. Growing up on the farm, the children aren't shielded from the realities of life and death. But as Clemmy devoted so much time caring for Kit Kat, Amanda's making a rare exception for her second youngest, who may be wise for her years, but is still only four years old. She looked after the calf and she did a good job. And I don't particularly want her to sort of feel like um, she failed. If it had been Edith and Violet, I would have told them that it had died. I'd probably have told them right there that morning that it had died. And yeah, I could say, yeah, it's dead. And I don't know what a reaction would be, but I just don't particularly want to sort of say that, that after all that effort, um, it didn't make it. So I know I always say that you've got to accept that sometimes you don't win, but I don't know whether in this case she does need to know that. As far as, as, far as she's concerned, she did a really good job. And, and um, she um, and Kit Kat lives on. But sparing Clem from heartache is easier said than done. You know that noisy one? Which noisy one? That noisy cat one we were making tea. Yeah, it died, that one. Yeah. It did die, but that one. But Kit Kat was, didn't die. He was a good one. Yeah, he was a good one. He just lied in, he just lied in a cuddly bed. He didn't make any sound. And we fed him milk. Yeah, yep. he did really well. Though Clem's been protected from the sad news, it's affected Amanda more than expected. So I spend a lot of time saying to the children, you know, don't get too attached, um, because at the end of the day, they're farm animals, and you get to see their whole life cycle. You see them born, you look after them, and um, you also see them come to the end of their lives as well. So, you know, and I did warn her with Kit Kat that there was always a chance it might die, but it's me that's upset. That's not a very good lesson, is it? But that doesn't mean that... that it doesn't um, upset you when you lose one. So, there you go. Shouldn't have got so attached to it. With a herd of growing calves to distract Clemmy, and plenty of work to do, as always. Life on Ravenseat Farm goes on. Next time, the family explore Ravenseat's past. We're living in a house that has been lived in for centuries. Edith and Violet find signs left by previous occupants. Is it a love letter? I think it is. Reuben gets an antique to sharpen his skills. We'll never have anything blunt ever again now. And the boys' restoration of a retro steam engine goes off with a bang. Going like buggy. Hell, fire. Stand back. <laughs> <laughs>